Welcome to an all new episode of Get Lit with Leanna, the podcast. Join me as I sit down with a new guest author in each episode to discuss their books, careers, and everything in between. I'm sitting down with best-selling author Allison Wynn Scotch, who wrote the new rom-com The Rewind. Allison has written so many incredible books, including Between Me and You, Time of My Life in 20 Years, The Theory of Opposites, and so many more. I had the best time chatting with Allison about this book. We got into all the themes of the story, why she loves second chance romances, and some of my favorite parts of this book. We also got to talking about our favorite tropes, including our love for celebrity romances, which led into an incredible conversation about film adaptations. And she even let me know that her new book, The Rewind, is going to be a movie on Netflix coming soon. This was such a fun conversation. I really loved getting to chat with Allison and getting to know her better. So I hope you all loved our chat. Without further ado, my conversation with bestselling author Allison Winscotch starts right now. Welcome, Allison, to the podcast. I am so excited to have you here and chat about The Rewind. Uh, By the time that this episode is out, the book will be very much out there. People will have read it. Like, it's just, it's, it's out there for everyone to read. So firstly, I'd love to just know a bit more about you and how you started writing. I know you have a very vast background. You've written tons of books, but how did all of this start? Sure. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I love what you do for the book community online. And thank you. And anybody who gets the word out about books is a friend of mine. So I (laughs) love it so much. Um, so I mean, I can go way back, which is that my mom was an English teacher and reading was really valued in our house. And like, I would go to summer camp and she would send me vocab words and, you know, like the the building blocks were there, Um, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, I really started writing in college. Um, I got, uh, I applied for this editorial column and I, was really competitive and I didn't tell anybody that I was doing it because I was like, well, I'm definitely getting rejected, but oh, I got God. it. And it was really the first time where I felt like, wow, like my writing sort of validated. Um, and then from there, I moved to New York after college and I, I I'm just going to accelerate through a bunch of yeah. things, but I, I started writing for clients. Um, I then segued into magazine writing and oh. um, sort of by night was working on a novel. Um, and I, that novel took me four years and it got me an agent, but it didn't sell. So, um, I wrote a whole nother novel and, uh, (laughs) she also didn't think that would sell. So she recommended that I not take that out. And I disagreed with her and fired her. And then I found my current agent and we got four offers on that debut book. And then it's just been, um, I mean, not without highs and lows The my career has been, um, quite, I don't know, up and down roller coaster. Yeah. uh, Here, this is my ninth book. So that's, you know, I would say really the, the seeds were planted in college. And then with my, I was a journalist or a freelance magazine writer for, you know, four or five years. And that really helped. Wow. But I imagine like what you were writing for magazines is very different than like these fictional stories you're writing. Like, were you doing like interview style journalism or were you doing like what type of, what type of. I was doing both. So right. I really sit, started off in like service pieces. Like I was writing for sort of all the big mag, you know, sit, there a lot of them aren't around anymore, unfortunately. No, sad. <laughs> like Adele, and, yeah. But like self and women's health and glamour, all of those, that sort of niche. Okay. Um, and then when I was able to transition to um, fiction, I started doing a lot of celebrity profiles, which was super fun because I'm was like obsessed with pop culture. So yes. that was amazing. So it, it, so it was a little bit of both to your question, but while the writing itself was very different, um, I think collaborating with an editor and meeting deadlines was really helpful. And I think And also like sort of understanding the power of specific words. I think that really helped get me to, to fiction. Okay. So it's kind of interesting. You mentioned the, the like celebrity piece because your book between me and you obviously in this Hollywood world, like what about the celebrity Hollywood stuff like drew you to that? Such a good question. You know, I think 
I think there's a lot of, like, a lot of us are, are like, Taylor Jenkins Reid is a friend yeah. of mine, and she and I have gotten into this discussion, like, what makes it so interesting? I think it's a couple things. One is, is there's a very public persona, and then, like, you wonder, like, do these people go home and, like, just put on sweats and, like, binge, <laughs> you know, Netflix? And, like, there's that whole sort of dichotomy there that I think a lot of us, without being, like, stars or just like us, uh, find yeah. really fascinating. And I also think there's something I tend to write um, complicated women. And I think to become, to sort of ascend the ladder in Hollywood, you have to be pretty ambitious. Yeah. Um, and so I think there's sort of that complicated exploration of that ambition, but like ability um, and fame. And I live in LA now. Okay. Um, so, which, you know, is then you really see like stars are just like us. They're on your right. soccer team. They're doing drop off. And um, so I just, I think, I just think fame is a really interesting thing to explore. I don't know if you like find yourself gravitating towards pop culture yeah. or not, but I just, it's, it's like, there's so many layers to unpack there mm-hmm. and you make a character really interesting. Yeah. So. I mean, I love everything pop culture. I'm pop culture, yeah. seriously pop culture obsessed. <laughs> exactly. I mean, favorite types of books to read are like anything that has to do with like celebrity culture in the celebrity world. Like if it's a romance book with a celebrity falling in love with a regular person, like that's my oh, favorite that's thing my best book, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I was going to ask you if you have any plans to write more yeah. books like in this world. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My next book is She is America's Sweetheart, who has like a serious fall from grace. So. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. So I, like, I, I, not to sort of jump ahead, I was really yeah. conflicted. Like I initially had her as a really famous romance writer, but it just worked better as an actor. And mm-hmm. I don't like to repeat my themes, but um, again, like there's just so much. It, there's, there's so much to explore in that. Exactly. Like yeah. it, they, don't, they can be very different characters as she is from the character in Between Me and You. Yeah. Um, and still find new things every time to, right. to, to pull, pull out of it. So yeah. Right. Okay. Well, it's kind of still speaking, I guess, about Between Me and You and your other books. Like a few of them have now been optioned to become yeah. movies. Like how does that process work? Are you involved with these titles? Like I know obviously it's a slow process and sometimes things get put on pause, Such but like- getting process. Yeah. Yeah. But how involved <laughs> do you get to be like as an author in my professional life? I work in film and television. Like I'm oh. on the publicity side, so okay. it's a completely different side, but yeah, I know yeah. how long these things can take. Like oh. how do you have any say in these projects that are happening? Like how does it work? So for Between Me and You, um, I am currently adapting that um, with a screenwriting friend. He actually just texted me and I was like, do not disturb. I'm <laughs> um, so he and I are writing um, a series for Kerry Washington's production company that we are actually doing as a um, audible fictional podcast. And oh then my God. The idea would be hopefully to transition that to TV. But we started this during COVID when people really weren't filming a lot and we just right. wanted to be able to tell the story. So, and Carrie's was looking for some podcast material. So that has been, so that is actually, we've written, we've eight episodes and we've written six. So that is actually going to happen. That which is so is, cool. Yeah, super exciting. We've had, I've had such like, a positive collaboration with them. I love them. Very smart. Um, very like author focused, which okay. I, I know is not always the case mm-hmm. with these things, but um, so that is probably the first thing that's going to happen, which is super thrilling. Um, so cool. Yeah. And, and different so- than like a film or a television. I'm hearing a lot of these, this like boom now of not necessarily audiobooks, but like these audio shows. Yes. That's well, that's exactly cool. what it is. And mm-hmm. so, and I, I'm a big podcast listener. I have two dogs and I'm like constantly walking them. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I, I can relate. Puppy. Yeah. We have a puppy. I'm like waiting for him to burst through the door at any moment. I said to my husband, <laughs> like, you cannot go out because I need him outside of this room. Um, but so, so, she Carrie has a three um series slate and the first one dropped it was called prophecy and I listened to it and it was like listening to what I imagine was old time radio like with all the noises like and I feel like maybe this is the next step of audiobooks because yeah. it's so immersive it was just it, it's so awesome so we're really excited about that amazing um, and then 
this is not, by the time this airs, it should be out, but the rewind is set up at Netflix. Um, right I now. can't, so, I had yeah. a feeling that it was going, it's such a good story. And like, when you Thank read you. it, you literally picture it. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank That's you. Incredible. Yeah. It happened a while ago. And, um, I mean, it should be announced any day now. So I, I hope I can say this on here. But um, amazing. Yes. So I am involved in that as um, sort of creatively. Um, okay. I had thought I wanted to write it, but they had a really experienced writer who I met with and loved. And I was like, go with God. I don't mm-hmm. actually have that much time to write it anyway. And <laughs> Um, what matters to me is sort of the, that it gets made as you know, so much does not. So, um, I'm really optimistic about it. They had a movie this summer on the whole team did. And so they kept the same team together. It's amazing. Um, And, uh, you know, they, I'm an, I'm an executive producer, like I'm some sort of consultant. And so amazing. Yeah. I'm sort of here to advise, but I also feel like Hopefully, and this is not always the case with writers, but like you just have to trust the people you're in business with. And yeah. I also always feel um, like we've had a few st- starts and stops with some others of my books. Mm-hmm. And I also always feel like even if it's not what you want, you've written the book and like exactly that speaks for itself. And so 100%. whatever else happens is just gravy. gravy. I totally agree. I hear it from like so many authors that I speak to that are having their books like made into films or television shows. But I also hear it from like the fans who then maybe watch the adaptation and they're like, okay, but it wasn't exactly like the book. But like, that's kind of the point. Like, let the book be the book. And then this could just be like another amazing complimentary edition that like takes it even further, you know? So it's incredible. And however involved you get to be is amazing. Do you think you're gonna be able to like go on set and stuff? Like, are you, is that I hope so. I mean, I, um, I, th- I think so. I I mean, you know, we'll see. So like, fun. I feel like, I, feel like I, I should be getting the first draft of the script pretty soon. And so that's like so far down the road. Like, yeah, I can get swept up in my imagination and I don't want to get, you know, sure. <laughs> too far down the road. but yeah, uh, I, I hope so. So. Okay. I'm so excited. So I guess this is the perfect transition now to talk about the rewind before we okay. get into it. Can you give everybody who's listening, like your little version of what this book is about? Sure. It is about two um, college exes who had a really acrimonious breakup and who um, are back on their college campus for a friend's wedding 10 years later. And they wake up in bed together the next morning, possibly having gotten married, um, but with no memory of what happened the night before. So they have to piece it all together. It's such an amazing concept. And when I first read the synopsis, I don't know why this came to me. I like had so many initial thoughts. First, I thought it was going to be like a time loop situation where like they can't okay. get out of the same day. Yeah. Then when I started reading it, I was like, oh, there's definitely some like hint of like magic here. Like how do they end up in the door room? Like it's some like magic thing. And then as I was reading, I was like, no, they were just drunk. Like I just, <laughs> it took me so long to get to that realization. So how did you come up with this concept? Like it's so layered and it's so fun. Thank you. Well, I, I have done the um, magical realism in okay. um, previous books of mine. And I actually... When I was trying to come up with what my next book was going to be, I did debate doing a magical realism thing. But as I said earlier, I tend to have a really difficult time repeating myself. Like I just, I chastise myself about it. Not that I, there's anything wrong with it, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's just something in my personality where I make things harder for myself. So (laughs) when I came up, honestly, you know, I just felt like we were, I, I wrote about this at the end of the book. So I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I was like nine months into lockdown and mm-hmm. I was go. I had not written a word. Uh, you know, we were all just sort of like trying to stay alive. Yeah. And um, literally whoever we were living with and not murder each other. Yeah. So um, I was just taking a walk and I was talking to my friend, Laura Dave, who's a writer and who um, love, love. Yeah. She's like usually one of my first collaborators. Okay. Um, so um and I was just like, I have to write something. And I was just pitching her ideas. And I was like, what about, I really like a lot of my books explore sort of that road not taken yes. idea. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to write something joyful. Uh, like it was just like such a bleak time as everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. That uh, I was just, I just wanted to write something fun. Mm-hmm. So I, we were just spitballing and I was like, okay, what if there are two exes? And she and I just sort of, you know, talked it through. And then I pitched it to my agent. And then 
I realized that I was actually going to have to write it. And it was yeah. really difficult to write because I can't imagine. It, it's like one thing sort of if you are on, like if you're watching The Hangover and you can show it visually, but to keep the narrative, there were three different timelines to juggle. And it, yes. so anyway, it, it honestly just came back out. Like I was just sort of spitballing with her. And I, I really do love the idea of like revisiting that sort of, utopic time in yeah. your life it, um, in like your early 20s. And so that's where it came from. After I read the book, I had read something you wrote, wrote I don't know where, maybe it was on your website where you would said that you'd pitch the te- the book as When Harry Met Sally Meets the Hangover. Yeah. And yeah. that literally after reading the book, like could not have been more perfect. But I wish I had known that before reading the book because then I would have been like, I wouldn't have been able, I was trying to hold on. I, okay. I got an advanced copy of this book, like in the summer yeah. and I've been holding on to it because I wanted to read it when I knew that I was speaking to you. So it would be like fresh at the top of my head. I swear if I would have read that those were the comp titles when I first got the book, like I would have not been able to hold off and it's the most perfect like oh, comparison. It's so good. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun, you know, it like, I really just think I, I, as you do, I've been reading so much rom-com recently mm-hmm. and they, it honestly, it just brings me such joy. Like there was maybe a period in time with my work where I was like, oh, I wanted to say something, whatever. Mm-hmm. I just want to watch things that make me happy. I want to listen to music that makes me happy or make me feel something. And mm-hmm. I want to read things that make me happy. And that was, you know, what I wanted to do. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so this book obviously plays on my favorite trope ever, which is, which is a second chance romance. Yes. <laughs> was that so much fun for you to write? Like ha- being able to explore all these timelines and also like, was it hard for you to jump back and forth between these timelines when writing them? It was really hard. It was a really difficult book to write because um, there were, it was, you know, like you started with the most basic like soup recipe and then mm-hmm. you had to keep folding in so many different ingredients and sometimes it was too much and sometimes it wasn't enough, um, you know, because there's 10 years, there's the timeline of 10 years ago, there's the timeline of the night before and there's the timeline of that next right day. Now. And yeah. The reader has no idea what it's happening. And to be honest, I didn't even know what was happening half the time because Crazy. I write without an outline. So I just started the first page. Wait, that go. is shocking for people that are listening and not watching. Yeah. My jaw's literally like my mouth is agape. I can't even, that is wild that you wrote this without a timeline, without yeah. an outline, sorry, an outline. Yeah. 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 So it was really like, I can't even tell you how many times I called my agent and we hadn't sold it yet. Um, okay. So I just kept calling her and saying, can we please just sell on 50 pages? Can we please just sell on a hundred pages? Like I need somebody to help me. And yeah. she kept like, no, no. <laughs> and cause she knew that I would just eventually you get it. Yeah. Oh, I'm fine. I'm going to finish it. Yeah. Um, so it was really difficult to write. It was also though, so much fun to write. Like I, as I said, I'm just somebody who really can lose myself in the nostalgia of yeah. that time in your life. And um, so it was also just a great diversion from the real life from the quarantine that we were still in wow. while I was writing it. Um, but yeah, it was other than between me and you, this was definitely the hardest book I've ever, I've ever I can't read. imagine. And also looking back at the reading experience, like I can't believe this entire story takes place over the course of 24 hours. Yeah which yeah. is also insane because so much happens. And I guess it's because of, like of how well you were able to intertwine all of those timelines. Oh, thank you. But what was the most fun part of this book to write? Like which scene when you look back at the entire experience were you like yeah. either the most fun or the most like gratifying? So there, there are two. One is I really didn't know how it was going to come together. As I said, okay. like I could start and I, like I knew where they were going to end up in right. the final scene, but I didn't know how it was going to play out that all the pieces like where Frankie started figuring things out, where the reader could then figure things out. Cause mm-hmm. Frankie, I think knows a little bit more than the reader does um, as we go. So there's a scene in the um, ice rink where she finds the shattered phone. Yeah. And that was when I was like, okay, this is when it all comes together. This is where like all the, the, she finds keys and like it's fo- the phone and the Zamboni. And yeah. I was like, this just works. And so that was, I had so much fun writing that where she was replaying the night before, but also 
she and Ezra are, are there in the moment together. Yeah. He's starting to like sort of spark and be like, oh my God, like I yeah. think something might have happened and I'm sort <laughs> of into it. <laughs> so that was fun. And then the final scene, since we're assuming everybody has read it, yes. but I, but not the final scene, the scene that I really loved is when she is after the wedding, when she is on stage and they've had this whole confrontation um, and like, Gregory is like trying to fill like um, Ezra in on his girlfriend who mm-hmm. has like a kleptomania problem and <laughs> and the music comes on and Frankie has that moment of like Ezra's left like she remembers. Yeah. And for me, getting back to the pop culture aspect of it, I am so music driven. Like I, there's always music playing in my house. I'm and the same. Yeah, exactly. So for me, I just really understood that like she heard this song and everything came back to her, which I, I'm, you know, we've yes. all like been in our car and been like, oh my God, it's yeah, like, it takes like, you right back to a moment. Again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So those two moments really stand out for me. Um, and actually I really love the epilogue, which me was too. um originally not there. And oh wow. My editor asked for it or maybe my age, I can't remember, but I felt like it's um I don't know, it's emotional for me where mm-hmm. like he gets what he wants mm-hmm. out of it. So mm-hmm. that the things. book the book is incredible because it's there's so many like laugh out loud funny moments but there's also so many like very touching and real life moments and I just want to briefly touch upon the whole accidental pregnancy miscarriage of it all yeah. because I felt like it was dealt like so honestly and just Thank so you. like respectfully I'm just curious as to why you wanted to have that be part of their conflict in this story like why you felt that was necessary to include that's such a good question um you know I knew that what had to really drive them apart had to be, you know, quite foundational. And mm-hmm. Frankie, they they were coming at the relationship from two such divergent things. Frankie did not want any of that security that Ezra wanted and all Ezra yeah. wanted was security. Mm-hmm. And so a pregnancy for me um, is really representative of that and how two people can just have completely divergent views on what that would mean for yes. the future. Um, so, you know, I went back and forth, like, should she have a miscarriage? Should she have an abortion? Like when I was making the call, when I was doing editorial calls for the um, offers that we got on this, mm-hmm. one editor felt really strongly that she should have an abortion, that it was sort of a cop out. I didn't, I don't know. I just felt like this made sense for the characters. Yeah. And, um, I- I'm, very, I mean, this all happened before everything happened in the States. Yeah. um, yeah, yeah. And I feel very strongly about all of that, but I also sort of getting back to where we started in the beginning. I just, I wanted this to be joyful Yeah, and I would never have judged her if, and and she actually plans to Mm -hmm. have an abortion. Yeah. Um, But all of that aside, I just felt like a pregnancy was so emblematic of exactly why they weren't right for each other because he immediately starts like planning and she who saw the same thing happen with her parents which I felt was realistic knowing people who have you know don't want to repeat the patterns of their parents yeah was like this is the last thing I I ever want want right now and that's enough to um make a decision break apart anybody yeah make a kind of decision like that for sure for sure I love how there's even though this book is over the span of 24 hours there's so much growth for both Ezra and Frankie and a scene that I really loved is when Ezra breaks up with Mimi and kind of confronts her head on about her as you called it her kleptomania which is just a hilarious like it's not it's obviously not a funny problem but it's like something that you don't read about in romance books ever like I was not expecting it was so out of left field so I firstly I just would love to know like how you came up with that story arc but also what it was like to like show that kind of growth for both Frankie and Ezra and being able to just like come to the decision to like do what's best for them and realize what that means well, I wanted to, I, and I, you, you were, you were such a good, I just want to say these questions are so good. Like I seriously, they're so good. I've not been <laughs> asked you. before, so I genuinely am I'm just loving them. Thank you. I wanted to come up with Mimi, something that wasn't totally like she, she was a needy girlfriend, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but something that was maybe um, not like, it's not the worst character flaw. Like, right. 
She likes to take some lipsticks. Like what, <laughs> you know, like we all have our own issues. Like our own like, shtick, a hundred percent. Right. Exactly. I even try to say that, like, it's not the worst thing in the world, but, uh, it's just a sign of dishonesty for Ezra in terms of what he's looking for. So mm-hmm. I really, I had to rewrite Mimi a bunch of times to sort of take her from annoying or overbearing mm-hmm. to somebody who was just not right for him. It wasn't mm-hmm. like, again, all of our partners and all of us have their own flaws. This just was sort of a deal breaker for him. For him. Right. Um or, or the dishonesty of it. So that's where that came from. Um, you know, like, it, 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 like I didn't want to make her like an embezzler. Like right. it wasn't even something, you know, <laughs> but like she likes to take a lipstick. Right, okay. right, right. Uh, fine. So um, that's where that came from. And the growth with Ezra for me was really moving. I, I just, I love that moment in the library where he, Ezra is not somebody who has a lot of peace. And he comes to like a real moment of peace over the course of the day and night before. And with Mimi, um, because he finally is recognizing what he wants, not what everybody else, what he thinks other people want. And, um, you know, it happens gradually throughout the day. Part of it is because of Frankie. And part of it is just, even if he is not not going to end up with Frankie, he's like, Mimi is not right for me. And that's the revelation for him. Right. Right. It's, I loved, I loved how that chapter closed. And then I loved how you made Frankie and Ezra like reconcile and how they, their story ended. Yeah. Thank you. I do. You know, it was important to me that it had to come from Frankie, like the the reconciliation. Yeah. Um, She is such a tough exterior and she had to really show that vulnerability. So um, it's getting back to that moment, that favorite moment where she hears, you know, the song and she's like, you know, it's in the movie where she's yeah. running. Through. She can't, she can't yeah. look out of for another second. So I can't it wait is for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I also just can't wait for this to be a movie because as I said, when you had first told me, like, I just, there was so much of it that was like cinematic while I was reading it. Yeah. So I just have to know, like in your dream world, like, have you considered anybody that you would cast as Frankie and Ezra? Like, have you thought about it at all? It's funny. Like, I used to, in my early books, I would write with like actors or actresses in mind. Yeah. And this, I just feel like there's so many. Ezra, I'm a little, I find harder to cast in my mind because okay. I, I don't know, men in their thirties, like I have a sort of a harder time okay. in pointing who that should be. But yeah. There's so many actresses who could play Frankie from like, like literally when Taylor Swift's album came out, I said, like, maybe like Taylor Swift. <laughs> Like, no, um, honestly, she could write the soundtrack, yeah, and then exactly. the song that she thinks of is her own song. Exactly. Well, Barnes and Noble tagged me. Um, they were doing like a playlist of matching books, and they tagged me yes. for the Great War. And I was like, Oh my god! Like, where? Like, this is why I love celebrity culture because then I start like spinning. Like, it's gonna be. Dope. I love that. But honestly, anybody from like Blake Lively to yes. Mila, could I, I? I honestly, there's so many talented women between let's say 28 and 40 who yeah. could do this. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you had anybody who came to mind. I just honestly I had it, in my head for Ezra and maybe because his name is Ezra, but because I was thinking of whatever reason pretty in the TV show Pretty Little Liars. Did you ever watch oh, it? Oh yeah. Uh, I did. Yeah. So Ian Harding played Ezra the teacher. Oh yeah. And then it's that so- name like I just when I read Ezra, I just thought of him. Like the only it's other so Ezra to say that because yeah. I met with Marlene King to possibly do this as a TV show. And so That's I started so binging it. And I was like, he is so cute. He yeah. Would be so- yeah, it's so yes. Yeah. So I thought of him. And then honestly, for Frankie, like I couldn't really see one specific person. Like I kind of just saw like a mirage of faces. It wasn't yeah. clear. I think a lot of people could do her justice, like Anna Kendrick. I, d- there are just Love so her. many women who I think would play that tougher exterior with like a sort of gooey heart of gold. Yeah. I don't know if she actually has a gooey heart of gold, but you know, that sort of <laughs> like, like p- Julia Roberts Esk. 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So in pretty Love. woman type of thing. So, yes, yes. Um, I mean, she's not a prostitute, but, but I think Doesn't you know matter. what I mean. I totally <laughs> yeah. get it. Love. <laughs> So yeah. now your next book that, that we kind of touched upon before, yeah. is that like the main project right now that you're working on and like, where in the process are you? 
So I am working on a revision of it. It's done. Um, but uh, I'm, it's the second draft, but it's really like the fourth or fifth. Cause I, wow. since I don't write with an outline. I really like sort of burn down the first few drafts initially. Crazy. I make this so much easier for myself. I don't know why I don't, um, <laughs> but, but I don't. Um, so I'm, I'm tweaking that now. And I think it's probably going to be out like a year from when the rewind comes out. Um, so exciting. And it's, it's, it's fun. Like I was really having a hard time writing it. And now that it's 75% there, like I'm really excited about it. So So um, incredible. Yeah. So it's, um, it is like the most famous actress in the world has like a public melt, not a public anyway, her career falls apart and she goes home she hides out at home and she finds an anonymous love letter from um, like one of her exes. So she has to. I love that. You know, if she goes on like a road trip, she figures out, she tries to figure out who it is. That's so, so that sounds like something that was made for me. I'm obsessed with those types of books. So I'm yeah, so excited. Second chance romance. Like I just I keep love, writing it. <laughs> they're, they're the best. They're the best. And if they have I, any form of yeah. like a dual timeline situation, like, yes. like, they're when a celebrity I'm so excited that's amazing I loved I'm sure I don't know if you've interviewed her and I don't even really know her but I mm-hmm. love funny you should ask which of course the celebrity and the timeline like so I good I can't get enough I can't get yeah. enough I interviewed Alyssa right when the book it was before the book came out yeah and I interview a wide range of authors, like from indie authors to first time, yeah. like whatever. And I interviewed Alyssa like a good, I want to say month and a half before her book came out. And then the book came out and I was obsessed with it. And yeah. then I like stopped kind of like talking about it, whatever. And then all of a sudden it like popped off on TikTok. Oh God. And it. I was like, I'm so happy for her. Like nobody yeah. was, it came out. It was, I felt like it was like a super quiet release. And then it just gained insane mm-hmm. traction. And it's funny. I was at a bookstore in Montreal and I find that the bookstore is in Montreal. The inventory is so much less. Mm-hmm. And they had so many copies of that book. And I was like, oh, really? good for her. Like, I'm I know so I really, I really, it was just so delightful. Yeah. Uh, it's such a great story. Yeah. And I love that everyone's like kind of comparing it to that article. I think it was a GQ article with oh, yeah. Evans. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I was like, yeah, I love that. I just love things like that. Little Easter egg things like that. Same, same. So fun. Yeah. So that one hit all of my, all of my yeah. buttons, which are all of your buttons. Okay. Yes. So. If you haven't read yet, I highly recommend. It doesn't have a happily ever after. So brace yourself, but it's, okay. it's the most incredible love story. The idea of you by Robin. I knew you were going to say that. Of course. I love Robin. She, well, she uh, lives in Paris now, but she used yes. to live like 10 minutes from me. So. Oh my gosh. Yes. She is yes. my favorite. I interviewed Lovely. her multiple yeah. times. The last time I had her on the show, it was a two hour conversation that I had to oh cut down God. into 35 minutes. It like hurt me to cut that interview because I was like, this is so good, but I couldn't publish the whole thing. But she's, she's anyway, that book is also wonderful. Same, you know, music, pop culture, yes, exactly. Older woman, younger man, yeah. what's not to like, yeah. what's not to love. Exactly. Team off the charts. Yeah. Oh, no. So good. So she's good. Wonderful. She is she's like the a, best. I've I done agree. a few events with her here and she's, um, That's so, I'm nice. so envious of her Instagram right now. Like, over I know her life <laughs> with her, with her dog in Paris. I like, yeah, like stop posting. Like I know. I'm your friend and I'm going to dislike you soon. It's, I mean, it's, I love it's, them. It's yeah. so, I'm so jealous. I know every time yeah. she posts her like cute, delicious little puppy with the Eiffel know. Tower, I'm like, you're killing me. You're killing I know. me. I know. So fun. Could be all of us, but. I know it should be, should be. Huh. Maybe right? next year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so, so much for taking the oh time. I This was so much fun. I'm so excited for you. I'm wishing you all the success, like with a thank movie, you. with everything coming out, your next book, like just nothing but the best of things for you. I'm so excited. Well, I am so appreciative of this. Again, I'm appreciative, like, your Instagram, you just give such love to this genre. And um, I think it's important now that people read things that make them happy. A hundred percent. So I appreciate that you cheerlead all these books and thank you for having me. Of course, this was so much fun. Yeah. Genuinely amazing questions, like things that I have not been asked and I just love to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy.